So today we're going to be talking about migrating to uh, to a new platform and how to leverage hidden opportunities. Um, and you know, generally, what we want to do today is, is talk about the opportunities that you have uh, that when you are migrating to a new platform. I think a lot of times platform migration can feel very scary and overwhelming, uh, and uh, and that's okay. It's okay to feel overwhelmed by platform migration because it is a big deal. Um, but we want to make you aware of all the opportunities that moving to a new platform unlocks for, for you and your team and your organization. Um, so this isn't going to be like a strict how-to guide of everything you need to do for a migration, um, but it's really to get you in a mindset uh, to be aware of all the opportunities uh, and, and, and the scope of the opportunities uh, and the scale. Because you know, as with everything, uh, it's more than, uh, than just a platform. Uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so a little bit about us, if you're not familiar with uh, Parson CKO and our methodology, um, we are all about engagement architecture. Uh, it's our philosophy, it's our methodology, it's really underlies everything that we do and how we approach any kind of digital engagement or engagement challenges. Uh, and you see the very bottom of the graphic on the right is the thing that ostensibly we are talking about today, platforms. Um, but platforms are just part of your organization's engagement architecture. So when you think about a platform, you also have to think about the processes that are around the platform and the people who use it and the strategies that it advances uh, and the experiences that the platform provides both for your internal users and external audiences. Um, you have to think about you know, ultimately what type of engagement does the platform uh, try, to, uh, try to support. Uh, and then uh, what kind of data is going to be uh, available through all of these uh, you know, layers of your organization. So with that lens in mind, we'll be talking about the opportunities for you and your team uh, as you move from one platform to another. First, we wanted to say, don't panic. Um, Eric and I are big uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans, uh, so you'll see some uh, Hitchhiker's Guide uh, references, but this is the first thing that he and I thought of um, uh, when we were talking about this webinar, uh, you know, particularly for people um, who might be you know, on a platform like Luminate that is about to go away and you might not have been planning to plan uh, for a migration, um, but we want to say don't panic. Um, everything will be okay uh, with uh, with these sort of lenses that we're going to talk about today. Hopefully, you'll feel a little bit better about where you're going. Um, we do want to say, after don't panic, panic, don't panic. Like, sorry, not sorry. Um, just to give you a sense of, uh, you know, the big deal that is a platform migration, but um, also why you shouldn't be panicking. Um, so in, on the panic side of the equation, um, just so you understand the gravity, and these are things that you probably don't need to uh, be reminded of, you're probably aware of these, but um, you know, in the planning stages of platform migration, the things that people end up panicking about if they don't plan for are time. Um, you're going to need more time than you think, and you don't have as much time as you think. Um, uh, particularly if you're, you know, if you're not aware when a platform's contract is expiring or what it takes to move from one platform to another, um, definitely start there <laughs> and think about how much time you have. Um, what is the, what are all the steps uh, set that goes uh, that that you go through because it, it it can take and normally does take more time than you think. Um, there are a lot of details to figure out. Um, and you, you'll, you'll see all the different aspects of that from the rest of the, the talk today, um, because it's not just about going and finding, quote, the best tool out there that checks all the boxes um, of feature sets. Um, there are so many um, really good viable options for platforms that you really need to think through all the elements of, the, of your engagement architecture. So the people that are using the tool, the other tools that you're using and how they integrate uh, um, and share data, um, the processes that you have that are going to that are going to have to change. So there's there's a lot there that goes beyond just platform, uh, you know, platform analysis. Um, the other big change that you're about to embark on is that you're you know, moving from a new platform is really disruptive. Um, you know, you're going to be changing people's skill sets, processes, and patterns, how they work. Um, not surprisingly, that can make people very uncomfortable, sometimes angry, uh, but you'll also find the people that are really excited uh, to try new things. Uh, and that brings us over to the, the don't panic or the positive side of the equation here, um, because the platforming is an uh, opportunity to really help people uh, in your organization by uh, giving them tools that are going to help them be more effective at their jobs, it's gonna help your organization be more effective in its outreach. 
Um, and as we'll see throughout kind of the opportunities that we're talking about, um, opportunities to really bring people together and, and uh, you know, come to a new shared sense of purpose and vision uh, for what you do as an organization and how you go about it. Um, so we, we, we like to end with a don't panic because there's a lot of good um, that you're going to be able to do and go through as you go through the process. So one quick note before we get into those opportunities about migration scope and scale, um, and this is kind of a spectrum. Um, from uh, a seamless migration to transformational. Uh, and a lot of what we're going to be talking about are opportunities that are in place, you know, whenever you talk about a new platform or a new opportunity to really kind of go big and think holistically about the people, the processes, the strategy. Um, and that can be very transformational. And if it's going to be very transformational, you want to take a certain amount of time to do it. There are other cases where you have a very niche tool that a small handful of users use very specifically for a very known, <laughs> well-governed task that maybe they just need to flip the switch and get a new tool operational. Um, and depending on the platform that you're looking at, that might be what you have, uh, the, the situation that you're in, that you just want to switch from one thing to another. Um, and you know you, that might be all the time you have um, or the budget or the staff, uh, the, the, the resources you have might move you into more of a direction of, oh, this is going to be a simple kind of rip and replace. Um, but you know we, we wanted to talk more about the transformational piece in particular, um, just so you can be aware of the, the, the scope and scale of what a platform uh, change can be. Okay, so we're going to talk about the opportunities uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, Opportunity Knox platform is potential. Again, um, you know, the, the platform at the end of the day is a tool that people in your organization use, uh, and often a tool they use together to do good work. Um, so we'd like to think of it as potential, potential energy that you're going to be able to uh, uh, unlock a lot of uh, as you go through the migration process. So today we're going to have a conversation about six hidden opportunities um, that you should be thinking about when you are going through any stage of the, the migration process. Um, you know, especially if you are in the early stages of thinking, oh gosh, you know, maybe our program, is, our platform is sunsetting and we have a year to pick, pick out the replacement, or we've had this email system for seven years and everyone is not really happy with it. What do we do? Um, you know, really being aware of all of these opportunities can help you Get, the, get some good perspective. Um, so we'll have a, this is gonna be very conversational. We'll talk about some ideas for each of these opportunities. We'll get some questions. We'll kind of riff on what we've experienced and what we've seen with different uh, organizations as they go through this process. Um, but definitely please feel free to ask questions as we go along, throw them in the chat. Um, like I said, I think we're, 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 a, we're an intimate group today. So we should have time to, to really dig in if people have questions. Um, so the, the, the six that we see here um, are creating momentum. So you, with, when, you, when you're moving to a new platform, you have an opportunity to create really good momentum in the organization to kind of move from where you are to where you're going, um, particularly if it's a platform that people have felt stuck in uh, for a while. Uh, the second opportunity is to really empower the people in your organization, bring people together, understand you know, what they want to do, what they want to do better. Um, involving people uh, and, and giving them this, this great new tool that's going to help them. Um, this is also an opportunity to improve your process. Uh, that is a huge piece of the, the replatforming equation and something that a, a lot of times organizations don't plan for, um, which is really saying, you know, we have this tool. What are the processes that are in place around it? Oh, we don't have any processes in place. We should get some <laughs> or we should revisit these or some of these are outdated. Um, so this is a great opportunity to get to get clear uh, in your processes. Um, similarly, it's a great opportunity to refine your strategy, to really get down to the, the nuts and bolts of why do we even have an email system? Why do we even have a CRM? We need a new one. Mostly we use it to send out emails to our newsletter, but why? Um, this, so this is a great chance to sort of take another look at your strategy. Um, this uh, <laughs> number five is a particular uh, um, uh, uh, interest of mine, um, this gives you an opportunity to find your contacts, uh, especially if you're migrating from an email system or, or email systems or CRMs or anything that has to do with the contacts that your organization engages with. Um, you're going to have to think through a lot of the elements of those contacts as you move them between systems. And this is a really great time to 
get more granular with your definitions so you can get more information about your audiences and engage them more effectively. Uh, and then finally, the, the last hidden opportunity we'll talk about is really getting a sense of the scope um, of the change that the platform is going to provide. So Eric and I will kind of uh, ping pong, go back and forth on on the different uh, the different opportunities and uh, and kind of uh, guide the conversation. So with that, I will um, hand it over to Eric to talk about uh, creating momentum. Thank you, Adam. What do we mean by creating momentum? Um, you know, creating an environment in which iterative progress is, can occur. Right. That creating those steps, creating that cadence, creating that 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 direction and also a direct a, a environment that supports that too, right? So this is your chance really to create a shared sense of purpose, um, both institutionally as an organization, right? And also even for your team and, and yourself here, right? Um, this is new change uh, that you're active, actively uh, uh, creating, right, in, in your organization. So it's building on your existing work cultures um, and the way that you work. Um, and as Adam said just before, it changing some of the way your colleagues work too. Um, go on to the next slide, Adam, please. So uh, these are different factors, right, of, of, of good momentum um, and, and the other hidden opportunities uh, within that. Um, you know, a lot of these can be subtle changes. They don't need to be uh, readily, uh, obviously apparent, right? But these subtle changes can have huge impacts on the way you operate. Um, and also st streamlining your, your workflows, streamlining your, your processes. Um, all of these help get people to be part of that, uh, part of that transition and be on board with your, with your process, with your uh, new, new shift. Um, again, it's also a good time to, to acknowledge uh, that change is hard, right? And that if you've gone through several of these types of changes before, um, if you've had to already migrate multiple times, multiple CRMs in the past because something wasn't working out. Um, every time you do this, it is time taken away from using the platform itself, right? You're just constantly shifting. So um, if you are doing that time over time, reflect, uh, acknowledge, and accept, right? That yes, you have to take a break just to focus on this because this is a lot of work. Um, but, you know, it does bring about hopefully positive steps. So um, you try to point in that direction. Um, to that point, right? You need to um, address, reflect, overcome those those past anxieties, um, and be a little, be willing to stretch, right? Um, if you if you haven't had the best fit before, maybe you know try and focus to to ensure that that next fit will be better. Um, you know, creating that uh, environment again in which there is a cadence, which there is a pace, helps set uh, expectations for the changes that will occur, right? having that pace, having the uh, iterative progress, or at least the direction towards progress and regular communication, you know, not just communication, but the, but the organizational uh, uh, tasks that you're doing to get to that place, all of these sharing it together with your colleagues help to create that, that pace that will get you to that next place. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, looking to really help your colleagues, right? You're trying to improve and make your make your you know make your work stronger, more um, effective, less time consuming, more uh, and you know simpler, right? Simpler but also complex. Uh, these automation platforms, um, some of these complex CRMs out there, um, fundraising platforms unlock a lot of potential, and that can get people excited. Um, but you need to make sure that you're taking those steps, uh, you know, step by step, uh, slowly but also deliberately. So guys, in regards to creating momentum, um, how would an organization begin the process of their migration, not just to identify the platform itself before preparing the transition and the transformation? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Artis. And one of the things that this, um, this brings to mind for me is the idea of having like a project a mandate, a project mission, um, and getting buy-in from the, the people who are going to be uh, you know, involved in the process and impacted by it, um, so that you're, you kind of create a mandate of, you know, here's what we are trying to do, here's the process that we are going to go through, 
here's the people that are going to be involved in the process and that everyone has a role uh, to play. So you kind of treat it, um, you know, similarly to any, any big project that you would have in your organization, um, where you have a, a very clear, specific mandate for what it means uh, to undergo the work together, uh, what the project means, what the timelines are, what the goals are. Um, so a, a little bit of a, a project mandate and, and having a project champion. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the people in the in the in the part of this in, right after this, but um, you know, really getting people bought in and having someone who is excited <laughs> about the project uh, and who can um, uh, you know bring that excitement out in others. Um, you know, as as Eric was talking about uh, acknowledging change fatigue and, and anxieties and and really um, you know you you want to to uh, sort of. <laughs> you're going to be doing therapy <laughs> you're doing like any any degree of organizational change in, involves a certain amount of therapy where you really need to understand people's challenges um, and anxieties but then you along with that you need some sort of vision um, of where to go uh, and that you're rowing in the same direction and i think of the i used to whitewater paddle and when you're whitewater and paddling in a group you know, you're constantly scanning the river for places you want to avoid but when you see that place, you point to where you want to go, right? So if there's there's a bad area over here, if you want people behind you to avoid it, you point to where you want to go. So it's not that people aren't aware of the challenges, but they have that vision um, for where they want to go um, because focus on the positive. So that's kind of a, a high level kind of idea for, for where to get started. Um, I don't know, Eric, if you had any other yeah, yeah, yeah. I really um, agreed with your statement having that mandate, not just even, um, you know, as a, as a like, deemed mandate, but have your own sense of purpose for this, right? What do you want to achieve as a team individually through through this? Um, you know, that I think helps to unite that shared purpose. Um, and whether that's uh, a, a personal uh, trying to get to that next step or, or also, right, um, clearly the, the, uh, the organizational goals here too, right? How can we unlock some hidden revenue? How can we better engage our supporters, um, our constituents? How do we um, encourage them to, to, to engage with our content, um, you know, or, or learn from our experts? Um, you know, having those top level, uh, not just top level, but, but critical uh, mission goals there really helps unite around that. Um, and seeing how those plug into the platform that you're either we're using or moving towards um, and having that destination is um, is really key to to uh, yes pointing at that continue that that pointing in the right direction yeah yeah absolutely we, a, we actually have a question from uh, Alyssa Klein um, it says, we're happy with MailChimp for communications purposes. It's our CRM that we'd like to change, moving away from Salesforce and Absana. Um, it'll be critical for us to find a new CRM that gives us more functionality and that integrates with MailChimp. Migrating the data from Salesforce is what worries us. What kind of support might we need for that transition? And are there CRM platforms you know of that are easier to migrate Salesforce data to? It's a lot of good questions. <laughs> um, I, I think the uh, we we have some sections uh, in in the in the webinar. I think that'll be a particular interest um, uh, where we talk about some of the the, the philosophies and, and opportunities of looking at your contacts um, and the data that they have, and and making sure those are well modeled as you plan your migration. Um, so a, a big part of it it comes down to the model of the different entities in your architecture. So. What is a contact? What attributes do we have of contacts? What attributes does the email system need to know about? What attributes does the CRM need to know about? Um, and how do we leverage those attributes to do better, more effective engagement? Um, so, you know, if we want, you know, if we want to say, we want to send, uh, you know, an automated email series to everyone who signs up for an event about a particular topic, and we want those emails to come, uh, you know, about that specific topic. Um, that's all stuff that requires modeling so that you can, your email system can know, you know, what emails to send and what content to pull for this, the contact that it's going to. And a lot of times that's stored in the CRM. So that the, 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 uh, the email CRM uh, connection um, 
you know, I, I, a lot of it comes down to the complexity of, of, of what you want to know about your, your audiences. Um, and, you know, we like MailChimp as well for a lot of reasons. Um, I think anytime you're talking with uh, about a Salesforce move into or out of Salesforce, um, that's, that's definitely on the side of the, oh, there's a lot of details to figure out. Um, so I would say, you know, from a, um, from a, you know, what kind of support you need uh, to move to to uh, a new CRM, um, I think it's it's definitely there's the strategic guidance support of, you know, really defining and we'll we'll talk about a lot of these areas, but really defining what we're trying to get at the end of the day, what we're trying to get to, um, you know, what does the CRM need to empower people to do, um, and uh, a lot of times what we found within organizations is that there can tend to be a um, tension between owners of the different platforms. I don't know if it's, this is true in your organization, but in many organizations, you know, communications owns email and maybe fundraising owns uh, the CRM and they, they use them for slightly different purposes and they come from different budgets and have different, you know, owners. Uh, and that's all stuff that, you know, again, uh, replatforming provides you an opportunity to, to really figure out. Um, oftentimes that's, that's one of the reasons it can be useful to have a, an outside party kind of come in to play the neutral third party and say, Hey, here's a process for getting through, uh, this that, you know, equitably involves everyone in the organization. I've been rattling on for a few minutes, Eric. I don't know if you have, no, that, that, that's fantastic. You want to add to that. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I would also say, you know, look at, uh, what, if you are, you know, look at your scope, right. Um, and I'm kind of getting ahead too, but, but, uh, look at how much, and do you want a complete replacement um, in terms of getting all of that data over there? Or also, is are you looking at your data a little more you know, strategically? Are you willing to uh, unload some empty weight, right? If you're having to deal with a system that has database limit sizes and you need to, you know, your budget can only accommodate a certain amount, um, how do you decide, right? What you're going to take over if you have a field limit, um, and then also, yeah, the, the technical integration as well, right? How well does that platform play with, with MailChimp? Um, all of these are critical to <laughs> the requirements for when you're migrating. Um, and yeah, I mean, you might need, a, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of experience. Uh, you may need an expert to help get you there. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly a, a, a field that we, um, we are uh, excited about too. Um, since having you know done a number of these and and finding the opportunity the opportunities within to help unlock potential and we'll be providing calendly links as well so that we can set up some time if you want to talk through um with adam and eric uh in more detail um for sure so we'll definitely be able to follow up with you if you have more specific questions Absolutely. We could definitely go on, on about that, just that question for the rest of the time. Um, but hopefully the, the other uh, sections we'll talk about will we'll speak to uh, elements of that process as well. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, empowering people, because uh, again, this is a huge part of uh, you know, having a successful and meaningful uh, migration, um, which is really involving the right people. Um, so there are a couple of key things to consider here, and, and one of these goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about, you know, like a project mandate, is identifying your team. Um, your team for this, uh, you know, significant undertaking that you're going through. Um, obviously, you want a project owner who is going to be a you know, project owner slash champion, you know, who's going to be the person that is steering the ship uh, to select the, uh, um, the right platform. Um, you need to identify both a product owner and a business owner. Sometimes those are the same person. Sometimes those are different. So the product owner is the person who manages the product, <laughs> um, who manages the platform, who says, you know, I know where the documentation is. Here's how it's supposed to be used. If you have questions about changing it, come to me. The business owner is the person who funds the platform, um, whose budget it comes from. Um, especially if you're doing something that crosses multiple organ organizational lines, this is really important. Um, to identify early on and have the, the right people in place and the right buy-in. Uh, and oftentimes, maybe that doesn't really exist. You know, a lot of times with, um, with email or CRM, the ownership can be kind of hazy, can be a little bit murky. Um, and particularly if you want to really take these opportunities to say, okay, we're going to get a new CRM, we're going to get this integrated data, it's going to power these automations. A lot of questions will come up about like, oh, does this live in fundraising? Does it live in comms? Does it live in development? You know that that that's a that can be a tricky tricky thing to undergo. But 
um, it's important. Um, and then expert users and non-expert users, um, really thinking through who in your organization uses the current tool as an expert, like they really know how to use it and maybe they can do some custom configuration of it, um, or at the very least, they're, they're very familiar with it. Um, Non-expert users would be people who can do some tasks with it, but need a lot of guidance. Um, one thing that I don't have on this slide, but thinking about that is internal and external resources, right? I, um, uh, Alyssa mentioned, you know, moving from Salesforce and Salesforce in particular is a, a platform and an ecosystem that you almost have to really invest in outside support um, to manage or change um, or, you know, really build up a, a very specific functional skill set with Salesforce. So you want to think about you know, the people within and outside of the organization that, that are going to um, manage the, manage the, um, manage the tool. Um, and then you want to involve these people. Um, and, you know, there's different stages and uh, different areas of replatforming that, uh, you know, you should really be thinking about how to involve your team. Um, and this sort of you know, runs roughly in the timeline of, <laughs> of, of a replatforming, but um, starting with strategy and visioning, um, you know, how should the platform advance, uh, you know, your organization's, um, you know, capabilities, right? You're trying to, you know, you're not sending emails because emails are fun to send. You're sending emails to, you know, influence policy or to get people to donate or get people to come to events and like and advance along uh, the engagement path with you. Um, so the people that are using the platform, get them involved in, in understanding and clarifying and advancing that strategy. Um, and visioning uh, is a little bit more lofty, but thinking about, you know, what do they want to accomplish with the platform? You know, you, you'll, you'll have some people that will say, oh, I just want to keep sending emails. But then, you know, find the people in your organization that are like, I really wish an email platform could do this and then get excited about potential. Um, you know, involve them in discovery. And, and uh, this is really critical. <laughs> what's working and what's not working about the current platform. Um, we always like to do both, right? What do you like about the process and the platform you have in place? You know, what would you be really sad if, <laughs> you know, if, if this went away? Um, what do you want to improve? Involving them in that. Um, uh, research, what options are out there, right? So a lot of times, you know, when you're going through replatforming, you might have a senior stakeholder that says, we're moving to Marketo. And everyone sort of has to get in line. Um, but, you know, involve people in the research process, you know, people, especially people who are actively using the tool day in and day out, right? They should have a, a very large say in, in, in the replatforming process. Um, requirements, um, again, what does the pl platform need to do and provide and be and to do to be usable to the people who use it and maintain it? Um, I think we're, we're moving more and more away from an older model of platforming where IT would kind of, uh, you know, or traditionally the technology side of the house um, would say, well, it meets this requirements, it meets this budget, and it has this many seats, so it's good. Um, really thinking through who's going to be using it and, and what their experience is going to be like, because the platform is only as useful as the people who are using it. And if uh, they hate using it, then it's not going to be as useful. Um, get them involved in demos. Um, again, you know, really getting hands on with the tool, um, you know, really pressing the vendors to, to give you meaningful uh, demos that are tailored to your particular organization's use cases and get a sense of how it feels. Um, so really involving people uh, in that process. Um, also thinking about who's impacted uh, beyond the immediate team. So, you know, knowing again that, you know, platforms relate to your processes and your people and your strategy, um, you know, who's going to be in, uh, affected outside your organization. So if you're moving to a new email platform, um, how can that be seamless? How are we gonna make sure that we're not you know, getting unsubscribed, that people aren't getting lost in the shuffle? Um, how's your audience gonna be impacted? If you're going to a new, um, uh, a new CMS for your website, um, you know, what is the end impact on the, the user experience gonna be? Um, and what needs to be communicated? Um, you know, this is something we always like to get out ahead of if there's going to be any sort of platform change, you need to think about who's going to be impacted and what they need to know. So they're, you know, it's not just a surprise um, that is sprung upon them. All right, so I will just move into opportunity three. So people and processes go hand in hand, um, uh, particularly around your, your platform. So opportunity three is improving your processes around the platforms. And oftentimes this is a great chance for some house cleaning um, and kind of an assessment of, of where you are, you know, kind of looking behind, uh, 
behind the cupboards and doing some dusting. Um, you know, a lot of times what we find is there's a platform, but there's no real clear organizational process that says, here's what the platform is, here's what it does, here's how it works. Um, so this is a, an opportunity to take us, you know, get an assessment of the state of your processes. Um, you know, are they defined? You know, how are they learned and replicated and what sustains them? Um, you know, a lot of times, particularly in smaller, uh, you know, teams or departments, it might be that you have one, one staffer um, uh, that really knows how to use a particular tool and they just sort of orally pass down the information to people or, you know, send the help tools that they've, um, uh, you know, uh, developed over the years, but it's not documented anywhere. So if you lose that staffer, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're, you're starting at zero. Um, so this is a chance to say, you know, do we have processes? Are they, I mean, do we even have them? Are they outdated? Are they ad hoc? Um, do, who owns the process and the documentation? And this goes back to the idea of identifying a product owner for your platform. Um, so this is a great place to say, if you're starting, you know, moving from one CRM to another CRM, who owns the CRM? You know, what are the processes and are those documented? You know, especially if you've done a lot of customization of your CRM, you know, where is that customization documented? Um, because it can be, it's much easier to figure out how to move from one platform to another if you're able to say, hey, we've defined these 20 fields that we care about and we've implemented them thusly. <laughs> um, then trying to uh, figure that out just by looking through the system. So, you know, this is a great place to think about process and documentation uh, and the, the better shape you can get that in um, before you uh, before you migrate, the, the clearer your requirements will be. Um, you'll have a better sense of, of what um, what you need to do. So uh, the, that's kind of the, the big picture, the thoughts on, on, on process. I don't know, Eric, if you have anything to, to add to that or if anyone has any questions. Yeah, and I can probably take us into the next one while we, while we do that. Um, yeah, documentation, right, is really key here. Having a resource in which your tasks and your workflows and your staff and how they do the work is is put is organized, right, put together. This informs your you know your way of, of of how you work, how you do things. So having a place for that, having that standardized, having that. Um, prepared and 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 stored for for the future is really key in informing where you're going to go. Um, this takes us to our our next opportunity, uh, refining your strategies, which is the uh, the piece of of uh, you know really what is you know what are you trying to accomplish here, right? What uh, what does this platform actually do for you? Is this uh, a very complex tool that is used for a very specific purpose? Um, sometimes maybe not even what it, you expect. Um, if you have a CRM set up and your development team is just using that CRM to send personal emails through it, right? Because that's part of their workflow and it's easier to send out mass emails through that system. If that's their like key reason for using that, you may need to assess, okay, what is the purpose of this platform? Uh, that when how we put it in place, what, is there some better solution here that is, could be a layer on top? Um, how is, and is it even effective, right? Does it solve the business needs that you're seeing that you, that you have? Right. Um, and again, is it doing this successfully? Is it easy to use? If it's easy to use because someone is so skilled at the platform, um, but then if someone new comes in and and it takes them time to ramp up, okay, but it takes time, but it, but it may not be the, the still the best solution for you, right? It's just because you have a good process and workflow. So making sure you're using those to get to your strategic goals um, are really key. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, Eric, I'll just piggyback on that for a second because the when we talk about um, the purpose of the platform, this is another place where you really want to think about shared purpose, um, you know, common purpose of the platform, particularly when you're looking at CRMs, because um, you know Eric mentioned the the use case of oh well the CRM is something that development uses and they use it primarily just to find people and call them and keep track of their donation history. Um, that's that's really important to know, but particularly when you're looking at CRM, you want to look at it from the standpoint of you know in an organization we have contacts. And the contacts can be contacted by multiple people for multiple reasons to advance different parts of our organizational strategy. Um, so, you know, when you're looking at, um, particularly with CRMs or anything that involves contact, 
your contact ecosystem, I like to call it, um, you know, you really want to involve uh, people and get a sense of what they're doing within the platform and more importantly, what they're doing outside of the platform. Um, you know, we've talked with so many organizations that they have a CRM and development uses it, but then every department has their own you know, some department has a spreadsheet, another department has another spreadsheet, another department uses their email um, as, as their CRM. Um, so really thinking through, you know, what is the purpose you know, with the CRM? What is the purpose of tracking contacts? What do we want to know about? Um, I'll, I'll ramble on more about that later, but just wanted to um, uh, reiterate that idea of, of shared purpose there. Yeah, it's a, a great flag, Adam. Um, right. So making sure that uh, you, you know, you've assessed your vision, right? Has your organization uh, re, you know, reviewed or created a new strategy. Um, and again, are those tools in service of that strategy? If you have an, a redundant use case, like Adam mentioned, when you have multiple tools in place, all storing separate data, you have a, a redundancy, right? You have a, a duplicative efforts. And that, if you can find ways to, to unify those um, as part of your greater uh, strategic goals, that will be in service to, to, your, to the good, to your organization. Um, you know, and where are those overlaps, right? Um, though it's not only find alignment just from uh, shared purpose, but also for shared shared work and making sure that you're going through uh, and 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 doing it together, so that way your work is interoperable, is is uh, is shared and um, you know really just able to to be uh, comprehended by by different departments, um, and it also helps just in your own integration, right, um, within your e platform ecosystem looking at uh, how you can get that data to talk and, and flow right through different platforms and, and uh, ensuring that it is possible to do that without too much, uh, you know, with some effort it was required, of course, but without uh, reinventing your, your ecosystem. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just, I'll reiterate that, that second bullet about the, the strategy review cycle, um, uh, you know, which is, we, we, we've done uh, over, over the years, I've had many, many occasions where we start a project you get a little bit ways into it, and then someone goes, "Oh no, no, we developed a strategy for that," or you know, some other team is developing a strategy that's coming out next month. Um, those are things you should definitely be aware of within within the organization. So if you're in communications, maybe there's a new communication strategy that you know you've just developed six months ago, and yes, you want to be aware of that. You should also be aware of you know, are there other strategies that are currently being defined or evolved, or other research projects that inform strategy, um, so that you know. Even if, which is not to say you should pause and wait for these other projects to, to happen, but if you know, hey, development is actually developing a new con communicate a new fundraising strategy, um, you know, for this quarter, you can go and just have an interview with someone uh, that's involved in that strategy and say, hey, we're looking at moving to a new email system. Um, you know, these are the things that we think we really need to make sure the email system does. These are the things we think would probably help. Um, as you move into a new fundraising strategy, um, tell me tell me where you are with the fundraising strategy. Get get a little bit of insight into the other strategies that are being developed. Um, and again, you know, uh, you know, make friends, win friends, influence people, all that good stuff. Um, you know, know what's going on in the organization so that your tool can effectively sort of address those needs. Absolutely. Rita, to move ahead there. I'm not going to go through all of these directly because there's there's quite a bit here to unpack, right? But this is part of the, the framework of how we look at, you know, how, how do you assess your organizational needs? Um, you know, these are different tasks that need to be accomplished. These impact people, right? Um, we've got touched upon all these different factors already, right? But, but you know, really, what do you want people to accomplish? What do you want to accomplish? Um, and how can you support your organization in getting there? These are all of the different concepts and, 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 and ways to frame uh, what your needs might be um, organizationally and, and as a team and, and, uh, and strategically. Um, in regards to refining strategy, um, let's say that the platform that you're replacing isn't tied to any direct strategic outcomes, but the users of the platform do kind of what's always been done. Um, how do you explore and emphasize strategic importance of the platform and that shift to everybody? Yeah, I, I think that even creating this, this uh, as we, you know, new momentum, new shift, new direction helps provide that space for that kind of communication to happen, right? To start under uh, discovering 
uh, how things are done, what could be better, right? Not using the framing of, oh, that doesn't work, right? Um, also provide, you know, data to back it up. Um, and, and you're doing it together. I think that, that uh, essence of, 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 of solidarity in the goal, right, uh, is really key to, to making sure that, that your, you know, journey is, is, is part of your united uh, progress um, and not just um, a corrective measure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to piggyback on that, the, the, going beyond the idea of a corrective measure, right? Of like, oh, we just need, we need something better, right? Because um, a lot of times people's direct, people's direct experience with the tool is, is often what is most at top of mind, right? Because it's most in front of them. Um, and what you want to, to use this opportunity to do is say, okay, yeah, we're gonna get a platform that works well, <laughs> that you're not like ripping your hair out because it doesn't refresh fast enough or because it's convoluted, right? You want to kind of get people out of the headspace of like the the use of the tool to what the tool helps them accomplish. Um, and that's where you really want to start with that that strategy and sense of purpose and discovery where you're saying, what, what does our email platform do? What do we want it to help us do? Um, uh, you know, if we have a CRM, what kind of contacts do we want to be able to find? And what do we want to be able to do once we know that information? Um, so I, I think, you know, the more that you can, um, you know, as you're involving people who are going to use the tool, you know, get a sense of like their frustrations with the tool and what, but also what's working well, but then really focus on the outcomes of, of using the tool. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the workshops that we run is a, a, a use case reporting workshop. Um, when we're talking about any kind of data integrations is say, you know, forgetting how you find the data, <laughs> what kind of data do you want to find and what do you want to do with that data? Um, and then you can gather those from different people in the organization and say, oh, that means if we want, you know, if everyone wants to know this about this audience in order to do X, then we need a tool that'll have these features. But you're really focusing on, you know, the, 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 the outcomes, um, you know, what, what is the tool meant to do? I think, I think we'll move us on to the define audiences section. Um, so that we still have plenty of time uh, for questions as we go along. Um, so define your audience. Again, this is an opportunity, particularly particularly if, if email or CRMs are involved. Um, you know, your, the information about your audience is your organization's most, most valuable asset. I mean, money is great and all, but like knowing your audiences is, is, is gold. Um, and you know what? What we mean by this is is really getting granular with how you define who your contacts are. Um, you know who is going to be captured in this system? Are they well modeled? Um, and by well modeled, it means we we know the things we want to know about them, um, and we have a plan for getting that information, and we have a purpose for getting that information. Um, you know the the great thing about um, you know uh, email systems is it makes it easy to get someone's email address. Um, and more and more, it, it's getting a little easier to, uh, to get like their name and maybe what field they're working or their organization, right? Those are just you know, things that are fairly straightforward. Um, the more you know about your audiences, the more you can start to make sure that that information is in your systems. Um, so if you haven't created a contact model, moving to a new CRM or to a new email platform is a great way to do that. Um, and then, you know, making sure that you have the tracking and analytics necessary to capture what you know about them. Um, so I actually did a webinar recently on, uh, on uh, contact modeling, and we'll, we'll uh, provide uh, some links to those uh, resources as well. Um, but it's something that I care very passionately about, so I'll talk very high level about it for a second. A, a good contact model really helps you articulate for a particular contact who they are, what they care about, and what they've done. And these will be somewhat different from organization to organization. But if you can say, you know, who a contact is, what they care about, and what they've done, then you start to get a really, really rich picture of them and can do much more targeted, meaningful communications um, and, and ideally automated communications, right? So if you know someone's, um, someone's role, um, you might be able to give them uh, an automated email series that is more tailored with content towards a particular role. Um, if you're an organization that covers lots of different topics, 
maybe don't, maybe uh, uh, someone who signed up for your email for a particular topic doesn't care about 80% of your of your content, right? They might care about 10%. If you know what they care about, then you can give them the content that matters to them. Um, if you know, if you know that what, if this person has signed a petition or attended an event, you know how you know that they are more engaged than someone who has just visited the site or signed up for an email. So, starting with contact modeling again is, is really it's really valuable because these are all things that can be stored in different ways in different systems. Some of which can and should be connected across those systems. So, particularly if um, you know, we, we have a um, we have a client we're working with now that uses Mailchimp um, and uh, Asana um, as their um, no Monday.com as as their CRM, and they are looking at ways to either integrate Mailchimp and Monday.com or perhaps replace some elements of that. And a lot of it comes down to what are these fields? You know, what do we want to know about our audiences, and how do we make sure that the right platforms know that information? Um, and again. Starting with this is a good good place to involve uh, multiple people in the organization, right? There shouldn't be a separate contact model for development as for communications, right? You should, you know, one person is one person. They have lots of different attributes. <laughs> they have lots of different needs. Um, different people in the organization might want to be contacting them for different things, but they're the same person. Um, so many organizations that we work with, like, have spreadsheet here, spreadsheet here, CRM here, email system here, they all have different slices of the same person. Um, but that really hinders uh, the ability of the organization to, to communicate with those people at scale. I'll get off my soapbox about that. Um, uh, um, yeah, I think maybe we'll move to the, um, the scope section. Eric. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to keep this this within scope as well, right? Um, Part of this is understanding how how wide do you want this to go, right? And we're going to focus on primarily two lenses of scope here, um, platform and process. But all of these do touch the broader uh, scale of, and scope of, of, of what this transformation means, right? Um, Replatforming is more than just, you know, it's, it's more than just changing your tool around. Um, it's, you know, defining what it's used for, as we talked about. Um, and at what, you know, where does this touch? Where does this impact? What teams um, are affected by this? Uh, it's very important to that day-to-day. -day. Uh, and again, like having them being part of that process as part of a, as a subject matter expert, right? Knowing exactly how things are used. So that way, when you do transition to something new, um, they're prepared are also part of that, part of that conversation. Um, what was customized immediately, right? Upon launch, what can be moved over, right? What is out of, what is part of the solution that you provided? If, um, you know, you need a, a WYSIWYG tool, drag and drop editor built into your, your email platform and your team doesn't know how to code emails by, by hand, you're certainly gonna need another drag and drop editor in that new email platform. Um, and you can't always necessarily just plug one in. Sometimes you can, but can your platform support that? Um, knowing how all these different parts fit together um, is critical to the success of um, how big your, how big this is this is going to be right how much this will change what will have to be retrained what will have to be um, re, you know relearn retaught uh, right and to that that data side as well like what can be migrated over um, you know what needs to be manipulated Do, is is are the fields going to match are you ensuring that you are matching those line by line or again, what can be, uh, what can be dropped? What can be left as 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 cleaning house, right? Um, all of these need to be defined um, in order to to rein in where exactly your your direction will be. Um, the next uh, version or next uh, vision of of, uh, of scope we'd like to look at is right is is process uh, the more people driven uh, side of it um, or people driven processes, right? Um, how many people use this? Is this a platform that the entire staff uses, right? Is this, you're a medium-sized organization, right? How many, you know, do you have 100, 200 people in this? Um, and are they skilled or are they uh, beginners, right? Or just getting their job done? Um, do they need more training? If you're moving to a more complex platform, um, Salesforce, for example, is, is a platform that is very complex and requires usually third-party skilled experts to help you get there. Um, Maybe you want to move to one that is a little less complex so that your 
practitioners can get things uh, done in a, in a more straightforward, right, and in, in a less customized way. Um, but yeah, do they need that training to get there? The answer probably is, is going to be yes. Uh, new platforms do require that training. Uh, it is a great investment in your staff and your colleagues. Um, and usually when you onboard some new platform, there is a training portion. Um, or you can ask for that kind of package when you come in as maybe part of your, your package, right? Um, that is a great, uh, great uh, add-on right, that you can get that empowers your staff. Look at what ongoing training looks like too, you know? Uh, whether you want at a, a continued training, if you have an expert in-house that might be able to facilitate that. If you want an outside expert, you can facilitate that. How frequently? Um, and that gets right into right, documentation. And what does your governance look like? What does it look like right now? What resources are available to staff to, to get their jobs done uh, using one of these platforms? Or what can you create? Uh, use this as an op another opportunity, right? To create a new uh, hub of, uh, of support for your, for your staff. Um, show them how to, how to use and unlock the potential of these tools. Um, part of that, you know, either a, a static resource that they can access on your company organizational intranet uh, if it's training videos that you want to do in-house or just office hours, right? I mean, even when we get back right into the office, uh, you know, have a designated time for someone to drop by someone's desk for, uh, for Marketo training or, or for Salesforce prep, um, you know, that, that provide those opportunities so that way there is continued structure for people to go when they know, when they're looking for and need help. Those are such such great points, Eric, and I, I think particularly that the last couple of points you made about the, the sort of the ongoing training and support. Um, you know, particularly if the tool is used by a lot of people um, and it's complex uh, and it hasn't necessarily been clearly or well documented, uh, you know, in the past. Um, you know, Eric uh, is is involved with the project with uh, another one of our clients who have moved from one big behemoth email system to another, and a huge part of it um, was. How are we going to get people trained and bought in and regularly learning to own the platform and use it effectively? Um, because getting a new platform is not like getting a new car um, where you just, oh, I know how to drive a car, wheels, a wheel's a wheel, steering wheel, you know, gas is gas, brake is brake. Um, you know, you think of it more as uh, you're getting a tank, right? You need, you know, you need someone to show you how to operate all of the things. And you probably want that person around to <laughs> show you, you know, Oh yeah, reminder, don't push that button. Um, or, you know, reminder to do this type of maintenance um, and, and understanding the organizational needs, the staff capacity and capabilities and, and really making a plan um, for, uh, you know, wh what, what are the mechanisms that we're gonna have in place to make sure adoption um, is, uh, is followed? Because that's, again, that's key. People aren't using the tool. If they don't understand it, um, it's not gonna be effective. Thank you, Adam. That's, that's a great point. You know, your, your platform here too, and we're kind of going back to the previous scope, right? But but uh, is it a, a a truck, right? Does it have 27 gears to get through to just to just to send an email, or is it just simple and does it have a send button? A lot of these don't have send buttons, and that is kind of scary for people, and they need the training to get there to learn how to use these and prevent those oops moments that that happen, right? They do happen. We all make mistakes here and there, especially in these very complex systems, but knowing how to use them and not repeating those mistakes over and over again is really key to the success of this. Absolutely. All right, so we are we have just a, a few minutes left. I'll kind of just highlight again um, the, the hidden opportunities that you have, uh, you know, as you plan a replatforming, um, you have opportunity to create great momentum in your organization, really start moving your organization forward. Uh, empowering and involving the people in your organization who are ultimately going to be what makes the tool successful or not. Um, it's a great time to improve your processes and make those clear uh, and sustainable. Uh, great time to refine your strategy so that people aren't just, oh, we're using a new tool, but hey, we're doing things more effectively. We're, we're making a bigger impact. Um, and because we have a clear strategy, um, it's a great opportunity to define your contacts better, um, particularly if you're using anything that collects data um, and uses that data about, about who you're uh, engaging with. And it's a great opportunity to, to really understand the scope of the platform and the scope of support uh, that changing a platform is going to need. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll send this deck around afterwards. And I think we have a, a few minutes for questions, um, but we did wanna say 
so long and thanks for all the fish. Um, another Hitchhiker's Guide reference uh, we won't really go into, but um, uh, we'll, we have a few minutes to, to uh, answer questions here, um, uh, but you could also reach out in lots of different ways uh, to continue a conversation with us uh, directly. See if there are any new questions or comments. Thanks, guys. Um, we didn't get any additional questions in the chat. Um, but we really appreciate everybody's attendance. Um, I would like to um, ask if anybody would be uh, so kind as to answer our poll question. Um, we'd love to learn more about your pain points um, in migrating to a new platform in your organization. Um, if you are able to give us your responses before signing off, we would really appreciate that. Um, and just keep in mind that we do these once a month. Um, next month, we will be discussing a new program that we're launching called our Data Innovation Studio. Um, so we'll have the team walking everybody through um, what that program looks like and how um, we're working really hard to create a collaborative data culture um, and help organizations realize the power of the data that they have. So um, keep, in, keep your eyes peeled for more information on that in your follow-up email. Um, but thank you so much for everybody who's participating in our poll and uh, uh, we'll be talking to you all soon. <laughs>